Strong aftershocks are still rattling nerves in the Anchorage area tonight, but for Bay Area scientists, the tremors are serving as a valuable tool as they test a new type of prediction technology. And good evening, I'm Juliette Goodrich. And I'm Brian Hackney. KPX 5's Katie Nielsen is here to explain how it works. Katie? Brian, geophysicists at the U.S. Geological Survey Office in Menlo Park have a new computer program designed to predict aftershocks, when they'll hit, how many, and also the magnitude. This Alaska quake is the first big earthquake to shake the West Coast since the technology was developed, and now researchers are finally able to see how well it works. The 7.0 quake violently shook the Anchorage area for more than 30 seconds Friday morning. The impact felt more than 300 miles away. Holy smokes. We have had literally hundreds of aftershocks. We have been diligently working through this problem. We are all in this together. Since that original quake two days ago, there have been more than 150 aftershocks that registered a magnitude 3.0 or greater and thousands of smaller ones. For the purposes of the Bay Area, this is an opportunity to learn. Research geophysicist Andrew Michael works with the U.S. Geological Survey Office in Menlo Park. He's working on a program designed to predict these types of smaller quakes that often occur after big ones. This gives us an opportunity to see how our forecasting is doing and learning from that. The researchers at USGS are using data from previous earthquakes along the same fault lines. They look for aftershock activity patterns, plug that data into the program, then can predict future shaking. I think the aftershock forecasting looks really good. We're pretty, pretty spot on. The hope is the same type of forecast can be used in the Bay Area after our next big earthquake, possibly helping to identify dangerous and vulnerable areas in the days immediately following a large quake. The only downside, there's no way to accurately predict when that big one will happen. In 30 years, we sort of expect one to happen. And that could be a little bit smaller or larger than what we just had in Alaska. I, I'm just interested in what exactly are they predicting, not a specific time and place of an aftershock, but it sounds like they're predicting the number and magnitude of aftershocks. Is that what they're predicting? Correct. So they're looking at the patterns that they've seen in previous earthquakes and then the number of aftershocks that they're seeing after those along the same fault lines. Okay. And this is something that's, this is their first test case of this new idea? It was only completed about two or three months ago. It was a collaborative effort between the office here in Menlo Park and an office down in Southern California. They finalized the program and have been crunching data, but this is the first time they've had a large earthquake where they can actually test this. And what they said is based on their predictions, what they're seeing in Alaska right now is following that model that they developed. Oh, terrific. All right. Well, good for Andy Michael and USGS, <laughs> my favorite people. Thanks, Catherine.